Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at 3D printing this air assist nozzle for the K40 laser. So this is our new K40 laser, and the other one I had purchased a metal one uh, from Light Objects. Now, I'm a little bit kind of hesitant, semi-skeptical of using a PLA um, air assist because the pieces, there's fire down here and this is plastic and plastic burns but we'll give it a shot I, I know a lot of people have done it and it seems to work for them so we'll see how that works too so it'll be a couple of different pieces so this is a remix of a, of one I found on Thingiverse that actually has multiple gimbals and I removed one I'm also very impressed by this nozzle design because uh, it's done in open SCAD and it actually has has open tubing inside so it takes the air in here and then it's got four jets down here and then obviously the center opening is for the laser itself and then it's got a mount here for another um, uh, laser diode for the aiming and then bolt goes through here now I've also added uh, for a number four um, uh, bolt to go through here to fasten it to the head so long story short what it does is just pops on the head here and uh, that the tube will come off here and then what you do is simply you know tighten this up to cinch this onto the uh, lens housing itself and um, I'm going to turn this a little bit and, and all you do is cinch it up and then what we'll do is we'll use some silicone tubing now I'm going to have to heat this up because it's about this diameter so I'm going to warm it up a little bit with the heat gun and put it on but uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll assemble this piece, get the laser diode in and, and all that, and we'll come back and we'll take a look uh, at how it all works. Uh, but in the meantime, tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, uh, watch uh, time lapse of this being 3D printed, and then we'll come back and see it assembled. And uh, But the one thing I, is watch the nozzle as it's being printed, because as I mentioned, there's some rather interesting tubing designed inside of this and it's printed around it. Again, the gentleman that came up with this did a very good job and I also have this out on Thingiverse too. I think it's a little bit more compact than the remixed version and so anyways it'll be out there. I'll have the link below but let's go to the time lapse then we'll come back and see it assembled. Okay, welcome back. So we've got everything assembled and on the machine, and I want to talk you guys through this a little bit. So again, I've, I've uh, as mentioned before, I've done the remixed on here. One of the things I did do is around the the top and lip where this all mates, I put a thin coat of uh, epoxy on here to give it some extra strength. That's sort of one of my cheat tricks is is to do that. Um, and it, it seems to work well. Uh, I did have to make the hole a little bit wider in the bottom uh, than it came out on the print because one of the things keep in mind is this head moves about the bed. The position where the beam comes out of the lens is not going to be perfect because what's going to happen is this moves, as this gantry moves, the, the centering is going to move too so it, it's not going to be perfect even if you have it really well aligned it's still going to move on that lens and and this is one of the reasons you're not going to get a highly precision cut it's going to probably be oh say within maybe a half a, a millimeter maybe a, even a millimeter um, you know cut as it moves through the entire bed and so the smaller amount of area you have I mean the more precision it's going to be so just something to keep in back of your mind now one of the things I, I do for the air assist I like this um, 
silicone tubing I get from light objects. I haven't really found any place else. I figure if I look, I can probably find it. My local Home Depot has a latex tubing, which is similar to this um, uh, resiliency-wise, but it's like 20 bucks, and this is, I think, 75 cents a foot. Um, versus almost two bucks at, at Home Depot for, for latex. And one of the reasons I like this over top of other like polypropylene tubings and that kind of stuff other folks use for like airbrushes and that is it is very flexible and provides very little, little resistance on the head, yet it's very, very durable. So I really like that. Uh, I've just used some connecting wire to connect the laser. Now what I've done is I've also, uh, this is a five volt diode laser and what I've done is I've put um, some uh, epoxy on the top where the wires connect because they're just soldered to two pads and you know eventually with all the movement as you can kind of see would would break them loose so again the epoxy is strain relief and then what I've done is I've used some white heat shrink tubing in place of zip strips I kind of like this look better and it's a little bit more efficient uh, I think than the zip strips were in my last implementation so that works really well. Um, and then what I want to do, and I'll put, I'm going to pan over here to the power supply. So what I did is I found, since this is a 5 volt laser, and sorry a bit for the shadows, um, since this is a 5 volt laser, and this is one of the reasons I like the 5 volts, is I don't have to put an inline resistor, but you could do this with a 3 or 3.3 volt uh, laser diode too, is I found 5 volts coming off that jack uh, down there, and I'll put an overlay so you can kind of see a little bit better what I'm talking about. So I just picked up 5 volts right from the power supply. No external power su uh, supply or anything needed comes right from here. The diode doesn't draw very much. And what I'm going to eventually do is uh, put a, 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 a screw block uh, probably in the side back here so I can run my water temperature gauges and that from that power. Because again, it doesn't take a lot and the power supply should put out enough. So. Uh, with that done, let's let's kind of close this cover and then kind of come back here. So we'll pan back and, and look at this guy. So I'm going to activate it now. And then, then what you see, I'm going to deactivate the laser before sticking my hands in here for safety. So as you see here, now the, uh, the laser's on all the time. One of the pieces I don't like a lot is um, with these 5 volts versus 3.3, for some reason I'm getting some backscatter light out of the back of it. Um, I have no idea why. Uh, but anyways, I still got the beam down here. It's just kind of distracting to see that up there. Uh, but it does work. Now, I'm going to reactivate the uh, beam. I'm going to do a real quick test hit. So, the idea is, you see now see the test hit. Before I stick my hand in there, I'm going to deactivate the laser. And then what the idea is, is you simply move this uh, adjust this gimbal to match the hole just like that now it's aligned it again the idea is is not for super finite but just to general positioning so now when I look inside here it'll maintain the general position as it moves around um, the you know the, the work object or as I move it around by the computer so I can be a couple feet away and I can see in general where it's lined up to um, I, I could probably focus the beam a little bit better uh, before I put it in there. I didn't really think about it before I put the epoxy on, but it's, it, again, uh, close enough. I could get a little tighter beam than that than probably what you're seeing. Uh, but all in all, I, like I say, I, it came out pretty good. I'm a little bit nervous still about the, uh, using um, a PLA or any type of plastic here because there is fire. In the next video I'm going to do, uh, I want to do uh, you know, why um, air assist? I, I think there's some questions and confusions out there. So the one thing I would just say, if you're going to do this with the PLA or plastic air assist, be very careful. I would not allow the machine to run unattended, nor should you ever really allow one of these to run unattended. Uh, because I have, especially cutting, well, I, even on plastic, a wood more so, but plastic, I've had it start fires um, inside the, the chamber. Uh, off to the side, well, one of the things I'm going to pan you guys up a little bit. I keep a fire extinguisher always very close to all my lasers and so ready to go. And so in case there's any type of problem, um, I can just reach up and within arm's length and grab it. Um, 
because again you're you're dealing with some high temperatures you're dealing with fire and it is dangerous so anyways um, enough rambling I guess on that so hey if you found this interesting um, give it a thumbs up I'll put the files out on Thingiverse if you're interested in printing it out uh, I one of the things I also do get is some questions about me printing them out uh, I really unfortunately don't have time I travel a lot for business and a lot of times when you see these videos they're a month or two after I film them because what I do is I try to film up um, you know a series of them I put them in a queue and YouTube releases them so again apologies my suggestion would be is to either take the files send them to like Shapeways I know they're a little bit expensive I think even Thingiverse though now is doing a get this printed we can get it printed from them uh, or or find yourself you know a, a, a sort of a maker shop you know that'll help you out so that's unfortunately about the best I can suggest right now so anyways again thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects